up this theme extremely cogently and properly, I would still like to say my few words about it. So I would like to focus on Edgar's intellectual integrity as a scientist and as a private person. So I'll just mention a few facts. He never added his name to a publication unless he substantially contributed to it. And he's one of the very few scientists I know who has mostly worked on his papers alone. It's very rare nowadays. He never followed any fashions. In fact, he rather created them. It's also very rare. And he was never interested in any financial rewards and throughout his career has remained a modestly living person. And regrettably, nowadays these are very rare qualities in our profession. Additionally, as we all know too well, and I will not repeat what the others said, he has made great contributions to science. And this brings me to the following quotation from a lecture of Richard Feynman. There are great ideas developed in the history of men, and these ideas do not last unless they are passed purposely and clearly from generation to generation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a work to do. Thank you. Manny Chandy is special in very many ways. Uh, one of them we saw earlier today. He's the only computer scientist I know who not only enjoys giving le lectures with Edsker in the audience, but he enjoys baiting Edsker in those <laughs> lectures. So let me tell you how we got Etzka to Texas. Uh, I remember this very, very well. I remember the department's discussions before we got Etzka, before we made the offer to Etzka. I remember the whole process by which we, we got Etzka here. And for the department, I'm very impressed with the department here, because when we discussed Etzka, we saw Etzka whole. We saw him warts and all. And we decided to get him for all the right reasons. But now let me just tell you a little vignette in this, in this episode. Uh, so I met Rhea and Etzka at the airport and I came with a bouquet of flowers for Rhea and I, Rhea, I want you to know that you're the only woman in the whole world <laughs> that I've ever met at the airport with a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so then the uh, the president and the dean at that time thought that um, the, the wise men of the university should have lunch with Etzka to, to invite him here. I think these are all the National Academy people and so on. And, and I, as this chair, was supposed to shepherd him along. So it's a little like introducing your parents to, uh, to your girlfriend from a completely different culture. And, and, and your parents want to be welcoming, but they don't know what to say. You know, this is a completely different culture. So we sit at this table in this room, and I'm really very anxious at this point, uh, because I was very anxious to get Etzka here. Silence. Etzka isn't helping at all. He's just being silent. So these uh, very famous people, very, very smart people, uh, are trying to be welcoming, but again, they don't know where to begin. So I'd made a little uh, plan that uh, I had talk about the weather, <laughs> the weather in case the silence got too deafening. And I'd, I'd thought I'd talk about the wind in Eindhoven compared with the wind in Austin uh, to get something going. <laughs> so I, I waited for a while and I was about to bring up my wind story when, uh, when one of the distinguished people said, I like programming. Ah, good. Right track. Then after a while he said, I like Fortran. <laughs> So, so I thought, my gosh, now we're in trouble. As, <laughs> shall I bring up our wind story? I... <laughs> then he said, I like the go-to statement. <laughs> so, because it's so powerful. And he gave a very cogent description of how one would use a go-to statement to implement a procedure. So at this point, I, was, I started bring my, bringing up my wind story. 
I, I was blabbing incoherently. Um, but it turned out not to be necessary because uh, wise people are wise. And I think Etzker understood that the community was trying to welcome him. The community understood that Etzker was a wise man and everything worked out okay. Thank you, Etzker. So there is something that's been vexing to me about the program. The section we're in is called short remarks. I would have called it brief remarks, but then I remembered what short meant, and I noticed there were a lot of people from UT Austin who would get a chance to speak and have their last chance to talk to Etzker. The first of those is um, Alan Emerson. Okay. Um, over the years, I have learned from Edsker a massive amount of uh, technical information. But what I have learned from him most and what I have sought out from him uh, is insight into what is important and what is not. It would be simplest to say uh, at this point that my feelings and esteem for Edsker are ineffable. Uh, but I need a booster shot of simplicity, so I'm going to go on and say just a few things more. Uh, as a graduate student, uh, I read Edsker's uh, A Discipline of Programming, and it played a crucial role uh, in the very first uh, scientific paper that I wrote. So, Edsker, I want to thank you for this book. It was uh, of immeasurable use to me 20 years ago. Now, over the years, it's been my pleasure and my wife Lisa's pleasure to get to know Rhea and you as friends and we now count you among our very dearest and closest friends. We've had the pleasure of spending many enjoyable evenings in stimulating conversation. Now, it turns out I've learned some things about Edsger. In some small ways, we're alike. I'll tell you some minutia here. We're both very keen on Royal Stuart Plaid. And at, at, at various times of the year, I try to uh, help Edsker's wardrobe out in this regard. <laughs> We're also both very keen on load and green. And I'll tell you something else about Edsker. While he appreciates a fine continental mill, he's also very, very keen on Texas barbecue. Uh, now, Edsker has uplifted my cultural standards. Edsker doesn't like fiction. I, on the other hand, uh, have historically been very keen on science fiction. I read a science fiction novel a week. Uh, but something has happened over the nearly two decades that I have known Edsker. Uh, no longer do I read science fiction. Um, maybe one book a year. I slip occasionally. I used to like to go to movies. As you know, Edsker doesn't care for going to movies. Um, nope. I eschew movies now. I don't know how it happened. I suppose uh, TV is next. 